now in place. I'm going to now uh, put the end cap on, again making sure that none of the wires end up getting caught up in the equipment tray. Just going to tuck the main power cord up in top there so it doesn't get squished. And making sure that the servos are oriented upwards in line with the vent of the ballast tank. Just push it in nice and gently and it's sealed. So this is the assembled watertight cylinder. One thing I want you to notice is there is an automatic pitch controller in this unit. Uh, that's the unit on the top that I was showing you. just want you to take a look at these servo leads here. And as I tilt the unit, you can see that the, uh, the left-hand servo is trying to adjust the pitch of the unit automatically. All right, what I'm going to do now is show you the filling procedure for the watertight cylinder's propel tank. Uh, this is the liquid air that the ballast system uses. Um, it's a propel style liquid air. I believe the chemical name is tetrafluorothene. This is the filler adapter, the needle valve for opening and closing the vent for the inside. And that's a standard tire filler. This point here is how the propel container inside the ballast cylinder is filled. Simply what we do, turn this unit upside down, transferring all of the liquid to the bottom of the tank, press it on the top of the unit, press down nice and firmly, and you can hear it moving into the tank. Just give it about five or six seconds until the tank is pressurized and let it off. Now what I'm going to show you on the inside here is how the cams actually work. If we rotate the uh, tank to vent, you can see that the left hand cam activates the vent valve, allowing air out of the top of the watertight cylinder and submerging the submarine. If it's moved in the opposite direction, I do have proportional control of this, I can blow the tank and you're going to see some liquid air escape from the propel container on the right hand side. And that is what um, blows the water out of the ballast tank and brings the model to the surface. This particular watertight cylinder really just has one end that you need to worry about uh, to any great extent and that would be uh, this end here that the equipment tray slides out of. Maintenance is very low on this particular unit. Uh, there is a rubber O-ring in there. Inspect it for nicks, uh, scratches, or tears. Uh, of course, if it is, replace it immediately. Lube the O-ring with uh, like a, a plumber-style silicone grease, and that will help keep the water out of the equipment tray inside and away from all of your expensive electronics. Now what I'm going to try and do so that you can see it, and I apologize because I don't have a cameraman here, is uh, actually install the watertight cylinder. I'm going to take the unit, tip it upright, and uh, feed the linkages into the appropriate holes in the servo horns. Drop the unit down. The nylon dog bone would now be put into place as the watertight cylinder is pressed into position. There is an alignment tab to the unit that you can see right here. We simply uh, bring it back a little bit and maneuver it around until it drops into place. The unit is now properly situated. Uh, as you can see, the uh, coupling for the drive system is in line. Like I said before, the nylon dog bone would go in between to transfer the force between the motor and the propeller. Uh, linkages are in place and they are connected. Just take my remote here and I will show you that the rudder is working, as are the dive planes. And as I mentioned before, you've got an automatic pitch controller. If you just take a quick look at the dive planes as I move the model. It's trying to keep its 
zero bubble. At this point, the strap is secured tightly. One good hint when you do get to the lake, wet that strap down. It's going to loosen up with the water. Wet it down, uh, stretch it out, and retighten it just so that you get a nice firm seating of the unit inside the model itself.